Hi, this is John Okoro. Welcome to this week's Auspicious Agile video blog. This week we're going to be taking a look at the latest trends in Agile scaling and in DevOps. We'll be referencing some of the information from the latest uh, version 1 State of Agile report, uh, the 12th annual, which always has some interesting trends. Let's take a look. We're going to start by looking at some of the macro trends in the responses. 98% of the organizations that responded to that survey this year said that they had basically had successful Agile projects. Uh, which is a huge number, almost unanimously uh, for almost every organization that responded. Also, 97% of responses said that they use agile development methods, which again is a really huge number. Uh, that we're talking about 3%. Almost no companies are actually responding now that they are not using agile methods, and even more so, they're also saying they're being successful uh, in their agile initiatives, which is huge. Anyway, that's a macro view. Let's get down into Agile scaling, which is where we really want to focus. So looking at Agile scaling methods, we're going to start by looking at the top methods there. And scaled Agile framework for the second year has been the top method. I think last year it was 23%. This year it's about 29%. So it's increasing, an increasing trend in terms of use uh, and being used quite broadly uh, across. And of course, it's a commercial enterprise scaling Agile framework. So it's the leading one worldwide at this point. Now, after Scaled Agile Framework, the next one we're going to see is going to be not a commercial framework. That meaning that it's not sold by a company. It's basically just uh, something that people kind of use, which is Scrum of Scrum. So Scrum of Scrums is the idea that you use a Scrum team, and you might have three or five teams. It's probably limited to about that many teams. And they basically would just meet a Scrum master or team representative. will meet with other team representatives two or three times a week maybe, maybe for an hour, maybe for a half hour, whatever they decide, and they'll just align and talk about any issues or dependencies they have on one another. It's not a very formal method, which is why when you get beyond probably that three to five team method range, it is uh, going to be a little challenged. And of course, it has dropped a bit. I think last year it was about 22%. Now, I think it's about 19%. So it is on a downward trend in terms of use, probably because larger enterprise scaling uh, requires probably a little more complex approach in some cases, or at least a little more of a sophisticated approach. Now, custom is the third spot. 10% of responses said that they were using a custom Agile scaling approach and on their own internally created approach, maybe their own SDLC, using Agile, Kanban, Scrum, some project management methods they might have internally. Uh, and that was third place. So 10%, pretty significant number. And then the next spot, the fourth spot, is a tie for 5% each between large scale Scrum, which is less, and disciplined Agile, which is uh, DA, which is from Scott Ambler. And Discipline Agile really includes everything. Uh, it includes DevOps and Scrum and Kanban and Agile methods. It includes Enterprise IT and Lean. And it includes Enterprise Agile, Business Agility. Scrum less, on the other hand, is really purely Scrum focused. And it is a Scrum scaling method uh, that is really Scrum purist more so. Now, we have in the fifth spot, we have a tie between three methods that got about 3% each. Uh, one was Enterprise Scrum, I think by Mike Beadle. Another one is Lean Management. And the third one is Agile Portfolio Management. Uh, so each one of those got about 3%, and they are being used as well. And finally, with a little honorable mention here, we have Nexus and Rage, which uh, were not at a significant number uh, of users, but nonetheless did still appear on the list. So. That is uh, kind of our look at Agile scaling. The upward trend of SAFE is really, Scaled Agile Framework is really a big one here. Uh, definitely continuing to lead in the marketplace as far as that goes. And Scrum is Scrum is decreasing uh, in use, probably because it's not as strong for complex or large scale implementations with Agile. Now, DevOps, let's take a look at that. So DevOps is tied very closely to Agile, kind of like peanut butter and jelly. So one of the things that we see here, not from the survey, is that SAFE has started to use DevOps since version 4 and 4.5. Recently, they've been incorporating DevOps into the Scaled Agile framework as a core part, which makes a lot of sense because if you're going to be at large scale, you need the CI, the CD, the automation, the things that are going to make sure that you're not having errors when you try to build all the different uh, code that the teams are working on across your, they call it release train in SAFE. So DevOps is a core component of SAFE. Now let's look at enterprises and enterprises that are using DevOps. And in the responses of enterprises that are using DevOps, we have 71% of the respondents say they either have or are planning to have a DevOps initiative, which is a pretty big number. We're talking about new more than two-thirds, almost three-quarters, are saying they have DevOps initiatives. This makes sense because in the high 90% number, 
uh, is where we're looking at for Agile, and usually DevOps initiatives will follow right behind Agile. So we see that a large number of DevOps initiatives falling right behind Agile because you need to be able to deploy quickly and without errors when you're using Agile type methods. Now, the next thing is how people are measuring success with DevOps. And some of the key things were accelerated delivery speed, 58% said that, improved quality, 51% said, and then increased flow of business value to users and reducing risk. And you reduce risk, of course, because you automate, you get rid of a lot of the manual errors that you might have or the uncertainty when you're deploying code or features like a Netflix or an Amazon. And then we want to take a look also at the value of capability improvement. So what do people value in terms of what capabilities? Number one in response is the ability to measure cycle time, which comes from Kanban and Lean, wait time, bottlenecks, and business value flowing across the delivery cycle. So people really wanted to be able to identify how they were doing in their cycle time, getting features out how quickly, and getting them to market. Also, end-to-end -end traceability from business initiatives through to deployment, deployment and develop, uh, deployment. Um, and that is something that people wanted to be able to track as well. And then following that was identification and measurement of technical risk. And finally, being able to actually support audit and compliance and governance across all the control points. And this is something that DevOps allows us to do because you are able to actually trace uh, and follow through for audit and be able to check all the different code, different things that are deployed, everything that has gone through because of that high level of automation especially important in financial services and other heavily regulated industries. So DevOps is really playing a key part there. Um, so those are the top reasons and ways that people are measuring success in terms of DevOps and also uh, what the capabilities are they want to build. So that's a quick look at uh, some of the trends in enterprise agile scaling and in DevOps that we look at from the uh, version one state of agile survey. You can find a link to that down below in the comments. Also take a look at, um, down there, please do like and smash the likes and support uh, options are down there in the comments for Patreon and Amazon. Other support options, please do subscribe and share across social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. as well. And as always, thanks for listening. Appreciate your time. And until next time, stay agile.